Thank you, Dr. Gill and, and ACAMP for the opportunity here. So, uh, oh, I got my first slide up there. The, uh, the title is Thinking Like an Entrepreneur. I was able to get my entire resume up there as well <laughs> and, uh, and my name. So, I was, uh, I'm an entrepreneur from way back. My dad was a farmer. So, he taught me how to think like an entrepreneur. Although, I think the scheme was just to really get cheap labor. But uh, over, over the time, I, I started to learn and understand kind of some of that, some of the mentality behind that. And it doesn't really, you don't have to be an entrepreneur. You can be someone working for the government and start thinking like an entrepreneur. It's, it's not that you have to be starting your own company. Now, so let's just kick it off with the, uh, the idea stage because I think we're a great idea generating province here. And whether it's coming from ideas, and we've seen them today, coming from the universities. Uh, Nate has got some, some fantastic programs. Or industry. But I'm just going to put up there that the value is not really in the idea. And I'll say it's your idea, even if you could take a pulse crop, make it taste like chocolate, and, and just sell it for cheap. And it cures cancer. I'd put $10,000 on the idea. So now just think about that. Because if, if the value isn't really on the idea, then it starts to become around the value is created when you can convince others to play. And if you can't, then it's just an idea. And I think we've all had ideas that we've seen over the years where you kind of look and says, I had that idea three years ago, and now, look, it's worth millions. Well, yeah, but the idea wasn't worth millions. It was the ability to get people to play. So I tell people, look for opportunities. And, and opportunities are everywhere. I mean, all you have to do is just ask yourself, why can't something be made more efficient? Why is there so many people involved? Why does this take so long? And it doesn't really matter what it is those answers start to bring you towards something that looks like an opportunity. And then it's do what you enjoy. Well, that just kind of makes sense because you, you're going to have to put a lot of time into it. And if you do what you enjoy, you can be passionate about it. And passion will bring the ability to persevere. And if you don't have that, then you've got, uh, then you got issues. So if you can persevere on something, uh, that's going to that's gonna help leverage the success. And leverage your position. You know, there, there's lots of folks that, that they say, well, I don't really have a lot going for me. Well, that's not thinking like an entrepreneur. If, you, if you're working at the university, you've got a multi-million dollar lab in your backyard. That's huge, right? If you're a student and you're, uh, you're working at home, right, you've got cheap rent, you're not married, you've got no mortgage, well, these are huge assets to be able to be thinking of how you can leverage that, right? That's not, that's not working against you. Share a vision. Okay, so, you know, we've heard a couple of really good visions. Dr. Webb, he, he had a great vision there with the watch and, and the kitchen and the whole bit. That's a vision. It's not just an idea. It's something that really stretched. It reached out there a little bit. Because one of the things, when you're thinking like an entrepreneur, is people will, will support a vision. They like an idea. It's cool. But they'll really support a vision. So you have to start thinking like that. And when you're talking... Are you portraying your cool idea with some depth? And don't worry so much about the boundaries, right? They, they can be a little bit out there in your vision. And don't worry about how long it's going to take you either. Just kind of fluff over that one. But paint a nice picture. Something that's going to change the world. Change, change somebody's life. That's what, that's what starts to matter there. Because you need support. And people will support a vision. Support of friends and family is important too. Everybody loves something. Some people, are, they're, they're a little bit misguided, but, but maybe, you know, you've got somebody that loves you and, and you know, when, 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 as an angel and you're trying to figure out how this works and who you are, if there's people that will support you, well, then that, that makes me a lot more comfortable because I don't really know who you are, perhaps. It just gives credibility to the whole situation. Now, you gotta talk, we got to talk about risk. And we've got to talk about picking your fights. And one of the things I just want to mention, if you're thinking like an entrepreneur, you've got to get your message out there and you can't be afraid to talk about it. So I just, I just put it out there 
that while NDAs are great and that patents and, and you should be doing all that, take a little bit of a risk and talk about your idea. Because the chances of someone that you're talking to here in Alberta that's just going to steal your idea and rip it off, is, is, it's possible, but it's low risk. Right? Your real competition is out there. They're big. And they're, you know, it, it's not here. So I, I just encourage people to not, not, not be so secretive so early in the process. And you have to recognize at times that you've got to make low data decisions. Now that doesn't mean don't do research. But if you could do all the research and you had all the information just there and you knew the answer, well then you would just of course make the correct decision. But in a lot of cases, like it was said earlier, you've got to move quick. So you have to make decisions with a low data point. And, and that's not always bad. You hate to do it. but. Don't be afraid of that once in a while. You have to make decisions like that. Can you, can you be viewed as an expert? We heard a lot of smart folks throughout the day here, and they're clearly experts in their field. But sometimes, you know, it's not clear where, you, where, where it's going to be so unique that you're going to be the expert. And then I just say break it down. Can you be the expert in Alberta? Can you be the best in Alberta? And if you can, is there anybody in Canada that's really better than you? And if you think they are, well then narrow it down and change it up a little bit so now you're the best in Canada. And then, well, well if you're the best in Canada, how far up? Maybe you're the best in the States, but you might have to focus and narrow your view a little bit. But start thinking about and being an expert, thinking about and encourage the folks that you're talking to, where are you the expert, right? That's thinking like an entrepreneur. Okay, we've heard a lot about product, and, and Craig just went through some, you know, some, some framework, and, and Gary talked earlier about framework for a product. And I'm just here to say that just because it worked once doesn't make it a product. I learned this lesson fairly recently. The, uh, and the data, you know, the data that, 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 you're, that you're looking at, you have to make sure, obviously, that, that the, the information that you're looking at is data driven and not from an emotional perspective. Because a lot of the times when you're working with folks, they really get enthusiastic about what's going on, but it's the data that, that yeah, I really have to look at. And the interpretation of the data has to be validated by third parties. And, and like Craig said, you know, they, they bring in experts because they're not believing you. And so when I, as, as an angel investor, I look at things, I'm, I'm always asking, so yeah, you say it works, but who else says it works? Right. Now this is one of the slides that says follow the money and understand stakeholder motivation. And we've heard about that before. We heard about it. There's lots of different ways to say this. And this is kind of the, you know how every presentation has one slide that really matters and the rest you can kind of, well this is it. Right. So this is kind of like if only one of you takes away one point from this slide, well of course then I failed miserably, but beyond that, this is the slide to remember. It's all about domain knowledge because technology is fairly easy to find and domain knowledge is difficult because you have to work somewhere for 20 or 30 years in an industry and really understand that industry to be able to bring forward the real nugget that matters right and so if you're if you've spent the 20 or 30 years in an industry and you have the ability to bring that kind of information forward and share it that's golden it's easy for you because you've been there 30 years, you know. But for others that are creating technology, this is very difficult. When, when, when you heard um, Ken from Wilson Analytics, he said does any, he'll talk to anybody in the field, right? He's thinking very much like an entrepreneur, somebody who, who just wants to get the domain knowledge right. Different perspectives. So. We all are smart in certain areas and all kind of ignorant in other areas. And so the whole idea is just how do you expand your, your network and, and your team to get different perspectives? Because people see things differently. Some people look at that and they see a wall, a lady sitting in a wall of, of water, right? And other people tip their head to the right and, and see, see, your, see it quite differently. So I'm just saying. Getting different perspectives from different people 
is really important. And, and that's, it, it's, it, it doesn't go against, you know, oh, I'm, I'm ignorant, I don't know about that area. If you're thinking like an entrepreneur, you want those perspectives. You want that kind of feedback. Now, we need, now we, we need to learn the difference between naysayers and good advice. Because no matter what you have as an idea, I'm telling you, somebody's going to tell you it's not going to work. That's a bad idea. And your job, if you're thinking like an entrepreneur, is to get out there and find those people and then tell them where to go. Okay, but, but use, it, use the voice inside your head because they might be an investor later. But you really, you don't want to listen to those folks. But then, there's people that are going to really give you good advice and they might be telling you that your idea sucks. And now how do you tell the difference, right? And you just need to hear, you need to get out there, get this from, a, get the input and the feedback from a several different perspectives. And then pretty soon you start to understand, yeah, okay, I understand why people are telling me maybe my idea is, is, needs, needs to be reworked a little bit, right? <clears throat> but you can't just give up because people are telling you it won't work or, or don't even start. Sometimes it pays to follow. I talk to a lot of folks and they're like, well, I've got to make this completely new. It's got to be very different. I've got to have a completely different value proposition. And while that's true, sometimes it just pays to follow and do what a lot of other folks are doing because parts are cheaper. You can, get, you, you can, you can ride a trend. You still have to be able to differentiate yourself, but kind of get a good balance on that. And don't be afraid to follow for part of what you're trying to build and what your idea is about. Okay, this says partner balance. So we've heard, we've heard folks today say, and they're excited about the partner relationships that they've got, and they should be, because these are, these are hard to get and they take work to, to create. But just a, just a quick warning, because I talk to a lot of folks and the first thing they're doing is going out after the big partner and it's going to be fantastic. But one of the challenges is that big partners think quite differently. They're motivated differently. They don't really care about you at all. It's not like they need you or they weren't doing a great business before you came along. So when you start to understand what's really driving them, then you can kind of get things in balance and, and you cannot get so so. Um, kind of enamored with the whole idea of like a one big partner that's going to do this. So I'm not saying don't get partners. What I'm just saying is be careful they think differently than you do and start to understand that. Talk to people about how different that really is. <coughs> okay. Um, just following on with, with, ca with uh, partners is the concept of cash and channel. Um, large partners have two things. They have cash and they have channel. And small companies want two things. They want cash and they want channel. And, you know, we've seen stuff coming out of the universities. Large partners want access to multi-billion dollar labs. And we've got them here. We call them universities. And small businesses are the catalyst or the bridge between the technology that comes out of there and making it available to large organizations. So that's just something to keep in mind, right? Because we have a real opportunity here in this province if you, if you just realize that simple fact. And just a couple, couple questions about, a couple comments on your team because details matter. If you're not the kind of person that is a detailed person, then get somebody on your team that is. And you just have to be real about this. And ask for the sale. There was a couple presentations today where the people got up there and they had slides, they asked for the sale. Do you understand? They asked what they wanted. They put it right up there in writing. That's, that's thinking like an entre entrepreneur. Get it out there. Always have that ready on the tip of your tongue. What do you want? What's your message? What's your ask? Right? <coughs> Building relationships. There was some other slides on that. Um, if you're not the guy or the lady in your organization that's good at building trust quickly with people, then recognize that and, and bring in other folks around you that can actually do that. Because if you're not good at building relationships, then you're not going to be very good, you're not going to be very interesting as, as a team and as a management team. And as Craig said, it's all about the management team because they can get other technologies other places. So how good is your team? And just over the years, these are, these are the, um, 
When I was trying, as I'm trying to build teams, these are the three questions that I, that I keep coming back to. So I just thought I'd put them up here. Can you do the work? This is if I'm looking to hire someone. I ask them, can you do the work? Are you going to be passionate about it? And then the third question, which is really, really interesting, is can we put up with you? And if you can really get your head around these questions for people that you're trying to hire, then honestly, yeah, you have a pretty good shot. But if you've got a red flag on any of these, well, then heads up. We don't, I'll tell you sometime about net positive and net negative, because I'm running out of time, I can tell. Okay, this is like, a very smart guy sent me this here one day, and as an entrepreneur, you have to talk about and be enthusiastic about the diagram on the left. Because there's what success looks like. It's, it's, we're going, man. How's it going today? Everybody asks. It's going great. You know, I've had to lay off half my staff. Things don't work. But, hey, it's, other than that, it's going great, right? And that's what you hear from entrepreneurs, and that's kind of the mentality. Very optimistic. And that's okay. But they have to, they have to understand that the reality is on, on the right. And they really got to go through a quagmire, and they've got to be willing to kind of put put in the effort, put in the time, persevere through what, what, what really is some, some trying times, typically, to make it all work. Okay. One of my biggest failures? Um, yeah, well the, big, the biggest whoops that, I, that I've made is I, I probably looked at, I believed some of the science, scientists that were telling me things. And they had data. <laughs> and, and they explained what the graph meant. And I believed it. And, you know, in retrospect, um, they had their perspective. They were, they were, they believed what they were saying, but uh, in retrospect, I, you know, I should have earlier got more a different perspective, more, more, more opinions. And because I didn't do that, we carried on. And those, every time I say I, we carried on, that's that you know, read really expensive, spent a lot of money, and a lot of time. So, so uh, for investment purposes. Yeah. On, uh, if you look at the A100 for, for entrepreneurs, uh, that, I mean, I should say, you know, angels investing in entrepreneurs, is there a tenor for the amount of investment that makes sense when you're an angel? And what would it be to, you know, for you guys? Okay, so the question is, is there, is there kind of an amount of an angel investment that is more typical here? Is that is that your question? Yeah, I do feel comfortable investing in. The 10000 for sure it's an idea. Right. So, so what happens is there, there's, there's different types of, of angels. Some, some folks want to actually invest a little bit in lots of different companies. And they'll, they'll throw ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 at several different companies and have a portfolio of 10 companies. And other folks don't do that. They want to pick two or three companies and they'll put $100,000 in and maybe multiple, a couple different tranches or several hundred thousand dollars, right? So depending on kind of the the model that, that a particular entrepreneur looks at, he's either not somebody that's, that's going to do multiple rounds at high amounts of money, and that doesn't reflect that you've got a bad idea. It reflects more their particular investment style. And, and, and don't interpret that wrong, right? So and in Alberta, um, you know, again, a lot of it depends on the, on the, uh, the industry. So in, in high tech, in, in in biotech, it's tough. Really, the, the attitude is, is not as good as it is, say, in, in oil and gas, obviously. Um, did I answer your question? Okay. I think we better move on, John. Okay. Thank you very much.